Hello again everyone. In this video we're going to talk about something called a cold backup. And a cold backup is a way of uh, backing up your Oracle database by shutting it down, backing up all the files that make up your Oracle database, and then starting it back up again. I'm not going to go through all of the pros and cons that go along with a cold backup. There's a, another video that talks about uh, all the different methods of doing an Oracle backup and the positive and negative things that go along with each one of those. I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, talking about the pros and cons, assuming you've watched that video. Uh, you understand all of the different pieces that go behind um, doing hot and cold backups along with the other methods like uh, export import and using the uh, RMAN executable to do backups. Uh, I'm going to assume that you understand all of those different pieces and you're looking at getting information uh, for doing a cold backup. So what are the things that we have to back up? Uh, when we back up a database? Well, the obvious thing is data files. But Oracle has a whole bunch of other physical things that make up the database, so we have to back up all of those things also. We're going to take a look at the scripts uh, we can use to determine where all of those files are. So number one, we got data files, but we also have temporary files, commonly referred to as temp files. We don't have to back up control files and online redo log files, but in general those files are usually small enough that it's usually a good idea to go ahead and back these up also. So we can back up our control files, our online redo logs, and there's a fifth kind of file that's out there called an archive file. Data files should be pretty self-explanatory. Those are the data files that make up your instance. Temporary files. Um, Oracle creates um, table spaces with data files that are associated with temporary table spaces. Uh, they're important to back up also. A control file is a really small file that maintains the physical structure of your database. Uh, if you lose your control file, you can rebuild it, but it's really a pain to do. It's uh, such a small file compared to the other data files that make up your Oracle instance that it's really kind of a no-brainer just to back up the control files that go along with your uh, Oracle instance when you're doing a call backup. Online redo, again, usually very, very small compared to your data files and other pieces that are out there. So it's always a good idea to back up those online redo log files. Um, you know, again, you don't have to. You can recreate them, but it makes your life so much easier if you just go ahead and back up those guys also. The last kind of file is a file called uh, an archive file. One of the modes that we can run the database in is in something called archive log mode. And if we run the database in archive log mode, what that does is it takes these online redo log files, and there's always more than one online redo log. There's usually, let's say, three. And this holds all the transactions that are going on inside of our database and they're written to in a circular fashion. Oops. So this is the online redo logs here. If we're not in archive log mode, Oracle just rewrites these files over and over again. If we are in archive log mode, every time we fill up one of these online redo logs full of transactions and we start to go to another file, Oracle takes this file and writes it out to some archive directory. Same thing happens here. We write a whole bunch of transactions into this file. As soon as we fill this file up, we go to the third file. Oracle starts to write that file to the archive directory. This gives us a way of going back and reconstructing all the transactions inside of our database. So it gives us a heck of a lot more flexibility. And we talked about this when we were going through the uh, all the different backup methods. When we were talking about hot backups, we said we had to have the database in archive log mode. So if we're doing a call backup, we can back up all of these files that are in the archive log directory also. This may not be feasible because you may have a ton of files in here, but you definitely want to do all your data files, you definitely want to do your temp files, you definitely want to do your control files, you definitely want to do your online redo log files. Again, you don't have to do your archive log files, you don't have to do online redo, you don't have to do control files, but it makes your job, your life a heck of a lot easier as a DBA if you ever have to recover your database. So what are the queries that we can run against the database to determine where all of these different files are? 
we hop into SQL Developer here, we can see that there's a bunch of queries that we can query the online data dictionary inside of our Oracle database to get us all of this information. The first one, if we want to look at our data files, is to go against a, a DBA view called DBA Data Files. And just to save time and typing here, I'm going to just paste those in. And you can see it's a pretty straightforward query. Select file name from DBA Data Files. If I execute that guy, you can see Oracle comes back and those are all my data files. So once I shut down my database, you don't want to back these files up while the database is running because uh, they're all going to be in a state of flux. You have to shut down your database first before you go through and uh, back up any of these data files. In this example, I've kept all the data files in the same directory, C, Oracle, DB, or a data sandbox. So it makes it a heck of a lot easier for me to go through. If I had them spread out all over the place, I'd have to figure out where all those different data files are and make sure I back all of them up. So you can see in, in my database right now, I have 73 data files. What's the next one? My temp files. How do I determine where my temp files are? Very similar query, slightly different. I'm going to hop back into SQL Developer here. And instead of going against DBA data files, I'm going to go against DBA temp files. Again, I execute that guy. And you can see I have a bunch of temp files here in my system. And again, they're in that same directory, C, Oracle, DB, or Data Sandbox. Under normal circumstances, you want to spread out your database over different mount points so you don't have too much discontention. Most systems these days uh, use sophisticated RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5 combinations that allow you to spread your data files over different physical uh, um, uh, disks inside your disk subsystem so that you can cut down on the discontention. But um, in this example, we have everything in the same directory, so it makes it pretty easy for me to go. So what's the next piece? Our control files. So what's the query to go ahead for our control file? Well, again, it's pretty simple. Hop back in here, clear and paste. This time it's just name. It's not file name, it's just name from v dollar control file. And again, we execute that guy, and you can see that we have two different files there. Control files are mirrored copies of each other, so you only really have to back up one of the control files. They're the exact same file, but like I said, they're so small, it really doesn't hurt to back up these data files, even if you backed up uh, you know, all of them that you have mirrored together. It makes your life so much easier when you have to recover your database. If you don't have a control file, it can really be a pain in the neck to go ahead and do. So it, just, it, it makes absolutely no sense to you know, skip over backing up those control files. What do we have next? Our online redo. We can find that from another simple query inside of our database. And again, the query is a little different, but it's the same principle. Instead of file name or file, this time we're going to look at member from this uh, view called v$dollar log file. Execute that guy. You can see those are our redo logs. Again, really small compared to your data files. You don't have to back them up. You can recreate them. But again, it just doesn't make any sense for you to uh, not back those files up because they're going to be so much smaller than the rest of your files. What's the last piece here? Our archive files. Where do we find out where our archive files are? Well, that's another simple query here. So I'm going to bring that in. So this time we're going to go against uh, the V parameter. And if you remember from our other videos, V parameter reflects what's in the init.or file. And we're going to look at the value associated with something called log archive dest. Log archive dest is your destination for your log log archives. If I execute that for this particular database it comes back in null. I'm not in archive log mode so I don't have to worry about that. So once I have all of those files and the list of all of those different files together it becomes pretty simple, right? I shut down my database, I back up all of those files, I start up my database again. Again, I'm not going to get into the pros and cons of how to recover a database like that. We talked about that in the other video. But the key thing that I want to stress here is that you have to make sure that you have a clean shutdown. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can shut down your database. You never want to do a cold backup after a shutdown abort. If you have to do a shutdown abort for whatever reason, uh, the only way you can safely do a cold backup is to start up the database again and then do a shutdown gracefully, whether it's shutdown immediate or shutdown transactional. You can do any of the other shutdown methods that are out there. 
but do not do a call backup after you've done a shutdown abort because your database is probably in an inconsistent state. 